Hi, kindergartners. What am I doing on the floor, you may ask? I'm sitting on the floor because Charlie was sitting right here and he was gonna join us for this cool story, but then he decided to go catch a fly. But I thought that some of you might like to say hi to Charlie, so I'm gonna leave this spot open and if he jumps back in, we can say hi to him. All right, so let's talk about what we're doing today. We are actually going to take a time travel back in time to the caveman days. And we are gonna create our very own cave painting using very simple materials. The only thing you'll need for this project is a brown paper grocery bag, some crayons, brown and black crayons, and some chalk if you have any, sidewalk chalk or chalk pastels would be great. And that's all we'll need for this project. So let's start by reading this incredible book. It's called The First Drawing. Um, and it talks about uh, a young boy who's living in a cave with his family and how cave painting originated. It'll sort of give you an idea of how that may have started. So let's read the story and then we'll do the project together. And he didn't come back. I'm so sorry about that, but maybe next time. Okay. The first drawing by Mordecai Gerstein. Imagine you were born before the invention of drawing more than 30,000 years ago. You live in a cave with your parents, grandparents, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, many cousins, and your wolf shadow. It's a big cave. You love to watch animals. You see them everywhere. You see them at the river where they come to drink. Horses, giant elk, reindeer, woolly rhinoceroses, bears, sometimes lions, and more. You sit and watch them for hours. You see the grand white and gray clouds that drift over the valley. Their ever-changing shapes look to you like a parade of animals. Papa, that cloud looks like a woolly mammoth. It looks to me, says your father, like a cloud. When collecting stones for spearheads and knives, you think some look like animals too. <gasps> Mama, look, this stone looks like a bear. To me, says your mother, it looks like a stone. You wonder, why can't they see what I see? At night, wrapped in deer skins, you see shadowing, shadow images of the animals again in the firelight flickering all over the bumps and hollows of the cave walls, and they seem to move. <gasps> Look, Mama, galloping horses. What horses? Go to sleep. Papa, Grandpa, they're on the ceiling. Elk. There are no elk. Now go to sleep. Sisters, brothers, cousins, don't you see the rhinoceroses? No, shouts everyone. Now go to sleep. They call you the child that, who sees what isn't there. How can you make them see what you see? Every night you watch the animals on the walls. Then you dream you're running with them, just like one of them. One morning you're out with your father searching for stones. You wander off around a hill of huge boulders. You look up and see right in front of you, <gasps> a woolly man. It's not made of lights and shadows or clouds. You can smell it. It's warm and musky. It sniffs you with its trunk and then stands perfectly still. So do you. You're afraid to move. It's like a fur covered mountain with eyes that look into yours. You look back and in those eyes you see that being a mammoth might not be so different from being you. The mammoth sighs through its trunk. <sighs> and like a mountain walking away, it turns and slowly lumbers away. You begin to breathe again. Whew. Papa, right in front of me, a woolly. Oh, child, child, your father sighs. What are we going to do with you? That night in front of the fire, as your eyes begin to close, you see... <gasps> An image on the wall, so big, so real, you sit up and say, yow! Huh? Says your father. What's wrong? Says your mother. Look on the wall. It looks like it's breathing. There's nothing, they say. Go to sleep. But, but look, the tail, the tusks. Why, why don't you see it? Now everyone's awake. There's nothing to see. Go to sleep. How can I make you see? And without thinking, you leap out of bed. You take a burnt stick from the fire and you run to the wall. Look, look, here's the tail and here's the back legs. And you make marks on the bumpy wall to show them where to look. Oh, and there's the back and the front legs. What oh, the ears, the eye, it's watching us. It's trunk, it's tusks. <gasps> Stop, shouts your father. 
He aims his spear at the wall. Everyone huddles in the doorway, the wide-eyed children clutching their parents' legs. I, I, I can see it, gasps your father. Th this is magic. No, Papa, you say, I'm just showing you. And you look at what you've done. <gasps> you've made the world's first drawing. Yes, you say, it is magic. Now everyone can see what you see, and so you make more drawings. And you show your parents and grandparents and sisters and brothers, uncles, aunts, and cousins how to draw too. For thousands of years, people keep on drawing. Even today, people are still doing it. And that's how, if you'd been around more than 30,000 years ago, you might have invented drawing. And it's still magic. So the first thing we're going to need for this project is the side of a grocery bag. So I have a Safeway bag here. I need some brown paper, so I'm just going to use a grocery bag for this. The reason why I'm using brown paper is I want to give the illusion of a cave wall. So we want it to look like a cave wall. So I'm going to prepare this paper to make it look like that. So what I'm going to use is my fingers because I'm going to do some ripping to rip the center out of my page, uh, out of my bag. So I'm going to rip this corner off like this and take your time and rip it slowly. Notice that I'm placing my hand flat to guide how the paper rips. The handles are tricky just so you know. So you work your way around the handles until you get a rough oval or circular shape like this. And it does not have to be perfect at all. I'm gonna take this edge off, we don't need it. There we go. And then you'll see the ripped edges sort of give it this kind of aged look. So I want it to get the illusion of a cave wall. And we're gonna do one more step to even add to this. But first, I'd like us to draw our animals. You can check um, on the the Google, sorry, on the document that this project is attached to, I've given you some examples of cave animals. You can use those to copy. We're gonna draw one large animal or three small animals on our page. So using our crayons or our oil pastels, we go straight into drawing an animal. I'm not going to draw one of the ones from the examples today. I actually want to show you a very simple method for drawing any type of animal. It's using ovals. You guys are learning about your shapes. An oval is in long shape like this. So let me show you. This is an oval shape. And that is kind of like the body of an animal, right? Then the neck of the animal is another oval like this. And then for the head, it's another oval shape like this. Can you see how this looks like it's forming into the head, neck, and body of an animal? And then I can simply do the same type of shape for legs. Another elongated oval and another elongated oval. And more. And now I have legs, a body, a neck, and head. And now I can add the details for my animal, such as a tail. Maybe I want to draw some antlers. Like this, you can do an eye, and that's it. So for our cave animals, we really do want it to be a very basic, basic drawing. Remember, back in those days, they were using sticks with burnt ends. They were using berries. They were using their fingers. They were using other materials to draw, but not necessarily a pencil, and they didn't have a bunch of colors to choose from. So we're gonna try to make this on purpose as simple as possible. So we do a basic shape of an animal like this. Now's the fun part, guys. I want this to look like a rock wall. So what can I do? Check this out. I'm gonna pick up my page and I'm gonna, nope, I'm not gonna throw it away. I'm going to crumple it up really well like this. And then I'm simply gonna flatten it back out again. 
I don't want it to smudge, so I'm gonna flatten it out with the back side where the Safeway sign was. And I just wanna flatten it out a little bit, like so. And ta-da, look. Isn't that looking more like a caved wall, or cave wall, with its ridges and bumps, just like in the story? And then we have a picture right here. So now we wanna add some um, more color and some texture to our animal. So using our chalk, place your chalk sideways like this, not using the tip, sideways like this. And you can simply color the fur on your animal using the side of the chalk like this. Oh, you know what? I don't want his legs brown. I think black legs are gonna look better and more caveman-like. So I'm gonna do some black legs and color those in like that, like so. Perfect. Maybe a little bit more here. And then for added interest in your picture, you can use some other earth tones like yellows and reds and browns and just create some color on the outside. Maybe it looks like this is the firelight glowing and the animal is showing in the firelight. But you guys are the artists and you can add as much chalk and detail to this as you wish. Maybe even you wanna add some polka dots for spotted, like a spotted fawn. And that's it. So you add your details and direction, or details and chalk areas like this. And then you simply blend them with your finger to give it a sort of smudged look and blend those colors together, like so. And now you have a beautiful cave painting, but not finished yet. If you have any black paper at home, I think it looks really good mounted on black. If not, you can use any colored paper, but this is gonna finish off our art piece. So it looks intentional. And here we go. So what I want to do is glue this onto my paper, but watch, can you see the way the edges are sticking up a little? I want that effect, I wanna keep that. So I'm gonna place glue right in the middle, right here. And I just wanna glue that area down. So I'm gonna put a bunch of glue right here. And I'm simply gonna glue my animal. Notice one finger right in the center where the glue is, like that, to glue it down. And now when I hang my picture, it's going to come away from the wall a little bit and look like a curved cave wall. So that's it guys, and now you have a beautiful cave painting inspired by the caves at Lascaux to decorate your home with. So I hope you enjoyed doing that and enjoyed the story and I loved creating with all of you and I'll see you next time. Look who I just found pretending to read the book all by himself. All right, Charlie, say goodbye to the kindergartners. Say bye.